I have added a second linear scale here to this y-axis because this Mitsubishi controller has the capability of running a fully closed loop. And I have left the other linear scale in place here so that I have the opportunity to measure the displacement separately on the second linear scale to see how good of a job this uh, Mitsubishi Sovo controller does with closing the loop and to see what effect all this has on the vibration measurements. This is the uh, diagnosis screen of the setup software and what we can see here is as the axis moves all these parameters update in real time. But there is a dual feedback filter and this is uh, clearly how the outer loop gets connected to the inner loop. Uh, the droop pulses here are how far we are away on the outer loop from the desired setting. So if this says negative seven, that means that we are seven microns away from where we're desired to be. It's pretty difficult for this system to reach the actual micron position that we desire. And I think that is because of stiction in the mechanical elements and belt stretch and things of that sort. If you wait long enough, uh, due to the fact that it hunts forward and hunts backwards a little bit by a few microns, eventually the hunt will accidentally hit exactly the position that you want and then it'll be with uh, it'll have a droop of zero meaning it's going to be exactly at the position you want to be i suspect in order to get this to perform even better i would have to replace the uh, belt system and drive the axis directly the dual feedback filter has a parameter that connects the outer loop to the inner loop. And it is just a number between one and 4,500 and it's given in radians per second. I don't fully understand this. So I tried several different parameters. I tried uh, 10, 100, 1,000 and 4,500 and investigated how this will affect the vibration measurements. It turns out that the parameter does not have a very large effect on the vibration measurements that I have been taking. Uh, here is an example, a typical example of the vibration measurement of a closed loop system uh, with a parameter setting of 10. And here is a typical example of a parameter setting of 100. And here with a parameter setting of 1000. And finally with a parameter setting of 4500. Now these are just randomly chosen um, sections of the measurement and they truly are equivalent. If I took some random uh, sections of the measurements with these different parameters, I would not be able to tell which one had a parameter setting of say 10 and which one would have a parameter setting of 4,500. That truly doesn't seem to have any effect on these measurements. However, if we compare this to the vibration measurements of the, um, of the closed loop system that doesn't have the linear scale as an outer loop, uh, we can clearly tell that there is a diminishing of the uh, very low frequency component of the vibration. As before, this represents roughly one second of data. So while technically this is a vibration measurement, most of the time one would really think of this more of bending back and forth, uh, perhaps to some binding or a bent ball screw or non-perfect alignment of the uh, two linear rails that comprise this axis or some other things. So the outer loop certainly does uh, improve the results uh, significantly, um, but we do talk about just a few microns here and it gets progressively harder and harder to improve these results.